Hi everyone! Welcome to my channel. So as you can tell from the title today that I am doing a yarn review on some cotton yarn that I got from Hobby.com. Now you will notice in this review that the cotton seems to be different and that is just based on the label and what it says for each label like based on washing instructions. But overall, it is the same yarn because when I was buying my yarn, I picked two different colors from the same uh, cotton yarn page. So it, it, it wasn't the fact that I found one cotton yarn and then went to another cotton yarn because they do have separate cottons in their website. Uh, this was a yarn that I purchased all on one page, so I'm not sure why it's different. But you will see the differences as I'm doing the review. And also my swatches I have decided to dedicate to just pre-crocheting my swatches and then letting you know how it frogs. Um, overall I just think that crocheting my swatches during my videos can be a little time consuming. And I am planning on doing a video to show how to do basic crochet stitches such as like single crochet, double crochet, and all that. I know you can go on YouTube and specifically search for those stitches, but I figured I would make a video myself on how to do it all in one video. But anyways, let's get right to this review. Alright everyone, so here we have the cotton yarn, and as you can tell, it's a little bit different here. But as you can see, they're both made by Mayflower. And this one right here says cotton 8-4 print, and it says 100% cotton, 50 grams, or 170 meters. The color number is 1507. And then it actually shows the color name right here, which is white slash euro, I think it says. I'm not quite sure. But then you have this one right here. That you can see it says cotton 8 print, 100% bull mold. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not. But I am not quite sure why it would be different when I purchased this. But I don't really mind because in case you, can, you can't tell or not. But um, the yarn is the same thickness. It has the same feel. And it doesn't show like the yarn size category on here, but I would say it is between a two and a three weight yarn. Now it does recommend a size three knitting needle or two and a half to three for a crochet hook. And I actually have, whoop, I'm dropping a crochet hook over here. I actually have my little chart that I printed out beforehand for this. So, because these are a bit different, as you can see on the side here, based on instructions, although the knitting needle and the crochet needle size is the same as this one, uh, based on washing instructions, they have different washing instructions. So, I'm going to do this one by one, and we'll start with this one. So, for the first one, I don't know why they have two different ones, I'm not sure if any of you know why. But the first one is the symbol right here, which is water temperature not above 40 degrees Celsius or 105 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the next one is right here, which is water temperature not above 95 degrees Celsius or 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And then here we have the triangle crossed out, which means do not bleach. And then we have this one right here, which is do not tumble, tumble dry. And then we have maximum temperature for ironing is 110 degrees Celsius or 230 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, as you can see, I really love the colors. The cotton is nice and soft. It is not like a baby soft, but it is soft to the touch. I really love it. And I did get four skeins of this when I purchased it because, like I said, it doesn't have that much yardage. It only has, or meters in this case, it has 170 meters. I believe it was, um, it said online, like 195 yards it is for yardage. I am not quite sure, but if you want to, you can double check online. I know Google has like a little thing that you can do from uh, calculating meters to yards. But anyways, if you are looking to get this chart, 
you can go on Google and just look up yarn laundry symbols or just yarn symbols. Uh, then this will come up. I had to adjust it so that I could print it through Docs or Google Docs. But anyways, let's move on to the next one. Now this one here is the 100% Bomald one. And again, it is 50 grams and 170 meters or 195 yards as I believe. And then it has this one right here, which is the water temperature not above 40 degrees Celsius or 105 degrees Fahrenheit. And then here we have the do not bleach symbol. Again, with the do not tumble dry. And then this one right here is a bit different. Now, it says the maximum temperature for ironing is 200 degrees Celsius or 390 degrees Fahrenheit. And then for this one right here, it just means any solvent. So I'm guessing that is based on um, what type of soap, possibly. But any solvent will do for this yarn. And that is all that there is on this. Now, as you can see, like I said, I guess there is a difference. It says on here that it's three or three and a half crochet, or not crochet, but knitting needle. But it's still the same with the crochet needle, needle which is two and a half to three. Um, while working with this yarn, this is the perfect size for it, especially if you want to have those nice tight stitches. Um, you will see in my swatch that I did a certain stitch that I would recommend actually going higher to like maybe a four or four and a half millimeter crochet hook. But you will see that here in just a second. So I crocheted with the 100% bow mold one. Right here we have our single crochet. And then the next row here we have a double crochet. And I'm not sure you'll be able to tell the differences between the single crochet and the uh, half double crochet, which is right above this double crochet. But I'm going to try to show you. So as you can see, there is like two little lines that kind of shape like a V in the single crochet. And then you'll notice here that it does the same. But then you have that one extra loop right here. And that is just the differences between the half double crochet and the single crochet. And then next up we have a row of puff stitches and I looped around four times to get this size puff so you can go bigger if you want to but I wouldn't recommend going less unless you're going to make these puff stitches really tight. And then for the next row we did V stitches which is just the double crochet, uh, two double crochets with the space in between, in between the puff stitches spaces. And then... I did, um, I believe this was a, yeah, I did a row of single crochet here in the middle, here, and then I went ahead and did some trebles. And then right above that is some bubble stitches. Now, you may notice that they look a little different. That's because I tested out how many loops I had on my hook. This one only had four loops on the hook, and as you can see, it's not very puffy. It's quite flat. And then this next one, I did um, five loops left on the hook before finishing off. And it's definitely a bit puffier, but based on my recommendation, which is this next one, I had um, six loops on the hook before finishing off. And then just to make sure you could compare them, I uh, did a four loop one right next to it so you can see the differences real well. But then I did the rest of them in the uh, six loop. And what I mean is there's six loops left on the hook before you yarn over and pull all through loops and then single crocheting afterwards to get that bubble stitch effect. And then next up, now usually from my past swatches I would just do a single row of shell stitches, but I went ahead and did a second row to correspond with it. Now, the differences I saw, this is where I said that I would recommend going a size up, so going up to like a four or four and a half millimeter crochet hook, because I noticed that it just seems to flop a little bit more and it's a little bit tight, 
or too tight for me. But I did use, I probably should say what crochet hook that I used, but I used a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook or a USD or size 3. So again, if you're going to do the shell stitch, you can test out yourself with that same size or going by the recommend, recommended crochet hook size. But I would personally uh, use a four millimeter to four and a half millimeter crochet hook to do shell stitches because I do have an idea in mind. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this particular yarn, but it is mostly Christmas, Christmas related. So yes, I'm already thinking about Christmas because I have all these ideas in mind and I am a big Christmas person. But anyways, overall, even frogging it, I'm going to go ahead and frog it. As you can see, there's no resistance, but it also doesn't have uh, that much fuzz to really entangle itself. So you might have, I wouldn't say it's like a snag, but it's not like the smoothest yarn ever where it just slips through like butter. But it has that nice resistance so that way you're not going too far like if you were just trying to take out one single stitch that it wouldn't just slip right through and then you'd have to redo that one stitch. That's what it looks like with just the shells itself. Two shells. But that is mainly what I have to say about this yarn. Overall, this is a really good yarn. And I know when it comes to cotton yarn, if you think, uh, I think it's called peaches and cream, the peaches and cream yarn feels a little rough. I want, like, if anyone's dealt with peaches and cream, you know that feeling where it's just not that soft. But this one is actually really soft and I wouldn't mind making a crop top for myself with this yarn. And it would actually be a really nice yarn, especially for this color right here, to make a baby dress out of. But overall, I think for the cotton yarn that I have purchased from Hobby.com, I am going to rate this cotton yarn, I would say, five Layla's. I have no issues with this yarn, so it has my 100% review status. So this is definitely one of the top yarns that I will be purchasing from Hobby.com. And I definitely recommend this cotton yarn if you're looking for something light, especially for the spring and summertime. And I don't know if I actually told you the color for this one. I don't think I did. But here it is. I believe this is the color number, but it's 1511. And then I thought it had, I guess not. I thought it had the actual color name on here. But anyways, that's all there is for this review. I hope you enjoy and keep a lookout because I still have many more yarns to do in the future. Anyways, I will see you next time. Quick note on this particular skein of yarn, because I wasn't wearing my glasses, I thought this was an O, it's a C, but it's E-C-R-U, so ECRU, so I'm guessing that there is a fuller name for this other part, for the color, but that's all I wanted to say real quick, and I'm just going to end this video here. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.